Welcome to Straight Shooting Firearms Talk Show presented by MyGunDiary.com and Drake Fine Sporting Arms of El Paso. With your hosts, Felix Menor and J. Scott Drake. And now, here they are. Welcome to another great episode. I, I love that applause track because it just makes it sound like we got hundreds of people in here. We do, yeah. as far as they know. As far as they know. Although uh -huh. this camera will give away that there are you know, a, just a few, a handful of imp important people here. Well, you're only looking, you're not looking over there. <laughs> oh, now you did. All right. Welcome to Straight Shooting Firearms Talk Show. I am your host, Felix Mena. Alongside me, the man with the Hollywood looks, the million dollar smile, the Clint Eastwood stare down. Owner and proprietor of Jake Drake Fine Sporting Arms, Master Gunsmith, Mr. J. Scott Drake. I just blushed a little bit. I don't know if you saw that. <laughs> that was the tiny applause. You gave me the tiny <laughs> applause. It's not the size that counts. That's what she's. No. Hey, uh, tonight is a, a big show. A big, big show. Biggest, biggest show ever, I, w I would think. And to kick things off, uh, we always like to thank our sponsor. Tonight we've got the owner of uh, Cerakote Southwest, and of course, Cer uh, Straight Shooting Firearms Talk Show is brought to you by Cerakote Southwest, the only certified Cerakote applicator in Southwest Texas, specializing in custom Cerakote applications for firearms. With over 120 colors to choose from, visit SW.com and order a custom Cerakote job for your firearm today. They also offer custom laser engraving and other ser services. Follow them on Instagram at Cerakote Southwest. And the reason we give them such a nice big promo on the show is because of what we're gonna show Yeah, we've tonight. got a present from them. We, uh, uh, I, neither one of us have seen it. <laughs> we have not, and I was very tempted to, because I actually went by Cerakote Southwest uh, to the I shop. I know, you were looking for validation. Felix actually called me, and he was like, hey, uh, do you think we should go ahead? And I was like, no, and he was disappointed. <laughs> well, I've had this, uh, it's a Smith & Wesson m &P. It's got a custom Cerakote job done by our show sponsor, Cerakote Southwest. I've had the pistol in my possession since Friday, and I was able to resist temptation i didn't look at it and even tonight when we put it under the uh, the football we had somebody table. else do that so we didn't see it yeah we, we yeah. had uh, our number one fan andreas uh -huh. uh, did it so uh, on the show tonight let me tell you a little bit uh, we're going to discuss as always the guns in the news we've got a couple great stories well i shouldn't say great stories interesting stories uh gunsmithing job of the week of course so we've got a shotgun that you're going to talk about mm -hmm. on you show me yours i'll show you mine i'm going to talk about these targets uh, that i went shooting with yesterday and, and give you a little bit of a review on them uh, a couple different targets and then of course last but not least our guest tonight uh Franco Baca from Cerakote Southwest and the big unveiling. I'll bet he gets the big applause. <laughs> We're, I am going to give him the big uh -huh. applause. Hey, uh, before we get started, I just want to remind everybody once again that it's not too late to enter the DFSA gun giveaway for that mm -hmm. custom Remington 700. All you have to do is go to your Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash DFSA, Drake DFSA. It's Drake FSA. Drake FSA. Mm -hmm. I'll, and I'll put the text on the show later tonight uh, where you can find it, the link. Uh, or you can go to My Gun Diary and find. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty neat gun, only because I I fixed it up. It's uh, a, so it's got some schmancy on a, it. It's a custom Remington uh, 700 by Drake Firearms with uh -huh. a custom muzzle brake and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, just, it's, it's pinned to the top of our Facebook page. So if you just share the post, we'll give you an entry into the contest, and you'll have a chance to win it. Boom! A great gun giveaway. Uh, and then, of course, I just want to remind everybody, thanks for watching on Facebook Live, but be sure to watch the fully edited show on YouTube, mm -hmm. and of course, coming soon, straightshootingshow.com. Now, before we get into the meat of the show and start the uh, gun news, I was going through a bunch of different videos, as I always do my archives, and I found something that might be of interest. It's certainly going to be entertaining. I think you're going to get a laugh at it. And then I actually want to get with your spouse and see if we can find some old photos or old videos of you. Before I uh, was in the military, I was a, a tennis pro and I did some tennis instructional videos. So let me show you before we get into the show show, I'll show you a quick little snippet. Country Club. Hi there, I'm Jeff Mena, director of tennis here at Rancho La Quinta. Today, with the help of some friends, I'm gonna show you how to improve your doubles game as well as your volleys. Now, one of the most common mistakes I often see out here on the courts is poor positioning and bad footwork. And this can result in a lot of shots down at your feet or out of reach. So let's play some tennis today and get right to work on those volleys. Here I am working one-on-one -on -one with Sebastian. Do you see his habit? Right. 
So as you've just seen, just by stepping in instead of to the side or backwards for your volleys, you're going to have a much easier time when you're playing doubles. Thanks for being with us today. On behalf of Rancho La Quinta, I'm Jeff Mena, and have a great tennis day. Uh, can I get a copy of that? Because I just learned some stuff. <laughs> I'm so. giving myself a round okay. of applause for that. Uh, I think I was about 26 years old in that clip. Yeah. You uh, look like your much younger brother at that point. Yeah, but well, those were the days, man, if, uh -huh. I could, if I could only go back. Hey, uh, well, let's get into the gun news now and into the meat of the show. But ne next week, I want to get something maybe from your archives. You, you got something? We'll have to see. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll surprise Scott with it also. This week in firearms news and current events. We are going to discuss uh, just two stories uh, tonight because we want to debate them a little bit and have some discussion. This is a firearms talk show. Right. The first one is a, a, a kind of a sad story. Not kind of a sad story. A sad story. And what we want to discuss is maybe a different way that the, it could have been handled. So what we have here is a army veteran, a female, uh, 28 years old, who had been uh, out of the army, but was having issues with PTSD. She was suicidal, okay? Somebody calls the police, I guess. She's got a firearm. She's threatening to kill herself, threatening to shoot herself. She's inside of her home or her apartment, and the SWAT team shows up, of course, right? Now, they were on the phone with her or trying to get her on the phone, and at some point, the communication with her and the authorities broke off. And they decided to go in, the SWAT team decided to go in, they went in hard. They go in hard with weapons up, something happened, nobody knows yet what, inside the home, but they shot and killed her, okay? Ooh. Now, the reason this is a sensational story, in my opinion, and an interesting story, is because this was not a criminal, this was not somebody who was holding somebody hostage. Right. This was a military veteran who was suicidal, she did have a firearm, granted, but maybe there was a different way it could have been handled. Because, you know, once the SWAT team or the police are involved and there's a firearm, if, she, if they even feel threatened, right, with that firearm, they're going to shoot. They're going to shoot. And so I think maybe it could have been handled a different way. Why not throw tear gas into the, into the house? Now, obviously, I wasn't there. You weren't there. The situation, we can't say for sure the reason why they didn't do something like that. But in my opinion knowing as little as I, I know, I think it probably could have been handled a different way. She was suicidal, not criminal. Yeah, there's definitely probably a different way it could have, could have gone, uh, for sure. Um, you know, like you said, I don't know the whole story, man. I wasn't in there with them. Uh, you know, it, it just depends. I mean, it would be all conjecture on my part, because well, I, I don't know do, the whole... Let's have a little conjecture. You want let's, conjecture? Yeah, let's okay. have a little conjecture. You, you if, are in charge of the SWAT team. Right. Okay, let's, mm -hmm. let's go from there. Let's just leave it at that. Go. Go ahead and take off. You're the, you're the captain of the SWAT team. Right. I mean, a little negotiation goes a long way sometimes. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to go in there full, full bore at, the, at, at that point in the game, I would assume, you know, and, and whatever made them make the decision to send them in. Um, the, it, the it, only thing I read on that is that they lost contact with her. There was no more communication on the right. phone. They didn't hear anything. They, they decided to go in. Mm -hmm. Right, but it's a suicidal person, right. not a criminal, not a, somebody holding other people hostage. Right. What's another way that you could have handled it if you're the captain of the SWAT team? You know, like I said, a little negotiation goes a long way, man. But uh, she's, she's not talking back to you. <sighs> who knows? At that point, who knows? And if they went in uh, thinking that there was something wrong inside, maybe she freaked, pointed a gun at somebody. Who knows? You she, know, she probably did. Right. Right. You know, there's, there's. Suicide by cop could have happened where somebody who is suicidal, right? Not fired, Jason's yeah. fired, uh huh. Uh, suicidal, right? And they raise the firearm and point it at the cop. Now, that I understand, the police are fearful for their lives and they've got, they, you know, they got to protect themselves as mm -hmm. well. They, they want to go home to their, they're not suicidal, you know, right? Uh, but if she's inside the house, I say maybe throw in tear. I'm the captain of the SWAT team now. I say throw in tear gas. Let's see if we can smoke her out, mm -hmm. get her out. Uh, I don't know if they had a little robot with a camera to go in and see what the situation was and that sort of thing. It's not like she was holding somebody hostage. So right. just a sad story, an army veteran with PTSD. We, we see that type of situation a lot. And I just wish there was another way that it could have been resolved. Um, I didn't read anything bad about her. She had, she didn't have a bad history, just, um, you know, a, another suicidal vet. And we, we hate to lose, we hate right. to lose another one. So. Uh, and then, okay, so the next story is out of Chicago, right? I say Chicago like that because all of us uh, Second Amendment enthusiasts and gun enthusiasts know that Chicago, Illinois is one of the worst places in the country 
to right. be yeah. super high crime rate. Um, you know, worst gun laws in the country. Some of the worst gun laws in the country, as far as restrict, uh, restricting. You know, you can't even own a firearm and have it inside your house in Chicago without a, 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 a license. license. Yeah, right. So this uh, story happened. In I, I will say that their pizza is the best, <laughs> though. Um, okay, we'll give them. We'll give them that much. We'll give them. They got the Chicago Bears. Yeah, yeah. I know you're not a fan of football. I, you notice how I covered. The I know end. with the jersey. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> but let's take a look at this news clip. Chicago police are still trying to figure out how three people ended up dead inside a home in the East Side neighborhood. The investigation is ongoing, but so far it's believed the three people were in a home they didn't belong in. CBS 2's Lauren Victory is live on the East Side to explain. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Aaron. Well, the mystery continues. We are patiently waiting on a police update, but the initial call to the scene here makes it sound like a home invasion gone wrong. We're getting a person shot at 10251 South Ewing, 10251 Ewing. Jose's calling, saying he just shot three people who broke into his home. That report came in around 5.30 last night. Police found two men and a woman shot to death inside a home on South Ewing. Neighbors tell us they heard the trio did not live in that house. Their thoughts and prayers are with the homeowner who allegedly shot them. Police haven't said if he'll be charged. He's just always, you know, been a good person, you know. He helped me out, you know, financially a couple times when I wasn't working, you know. And I was just concerned when I seen all kinds of police by his house. The medical examiner has not identified the three people killed here. Police also have not released their ages. That's the very latest from the East Side neighborhood. I'm Lauren Victory, CBS 2 News. Aaron. All right, Lauren. Thank okay, so we, this is the third week in a row, I think, or maybe even every week that we've highlighted a story about a home invasion. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be kind of the number one firearm involved, justifiable firearm involved story that we cover here on the show. Uh, this one, because it's in Chicago, very interesting. You know, if this particular homeowner had not had a license, they could have been brought up on some sort of charge. Right, yeah, them. like some kind of a possession charge. So three people broke into the house, and this uh, homeowner was able to n knock off one headshot, right? He had one of the, the burglars in the head, so this, uh, this uh, homeowner was obviously a good shot, and, the, and he killed all three of them. There was some early, I've, I've been following the story, there were some early reports that maybe it was a homicide, that they weren't quite sure if this was an actual break-in, but since then it's, uh, the investigation has shown that it was a break-in, that uh, this homeowner was justified. And again, uh, I just, as a homeowner myself, and you as a homeowner, you, it's something to be concerned about, right? Yeah, absolutely, man. You come into my house uninvited, I mean, you're gonna get what, you know, what you're gonna get. And then uh, we've been in the, sh in the shop here before the show. Uh, we're probably going to talk about it next week. Uh, Hurricane Harvey had hit Texas, and we're getting reports of looting. No, I've heard that, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that, I think that's the big real fear is if a natural disaster happens, and then it's become sort of a thing about survival, and people are going in and breaking in houses to steal food. That's one thing, yeah. you know. So next week we'll... we'll, we'll now, see if they're breaking in for your TV... <laughs> you know, I'm sure they're doing that too. I'm sure. Uh, but next week, we'll see if we can find some stories about uh, maybe looting a firearms involved story uh, out of Houston or that area of Texas. I hope that that wasn't a big problem. Uh, I, we're, we're, saying, we're thinking that it, it is. We're getting reports of. I mean, when Hurricane Katrina went through New Orleans, right, there was a lot of looting mm, going on yeah. there. So, mm -hmm. hey, uh, with that, let's keep things moving along and let's talk about this uh, gunsmithing job of the week, this shotgun that you've got. Oh. It's time for the gunsmithing job of the week. Okay, so tell us what we got here and the, the work you did to this beautiful shotgun, by the way. Okay, so this is a this is a Mossberg shotgun. It's not a high end shotgun, but you know we can do a lot of things to to make even a uh, a lower end shotgun yeah better and perform better. Um, so what we've done here is, is come in and actually ported the barrels. Uh, if you can see that on camera, and I. Uh, we'll get a close-up of it, like I always say. We'll get a close-up of oh, it yeah, when we're done. Yeah, I'll get close-ups of it. All right. So uh, what we've done is come in here and drilled ports into the barrel. And what this does is allows gas to escape uh, as the shot is, is coming down the barrel. And uh, what that does is it, it lessens the recoil a little bit and, and helps you maintain on target better for that second follow-up shot. Like, like all of the uh, muzzle work that you do, it just looks really cool. I mean, it adds a lot of aesthetic value to the shotgun. I mean, I'll, like I said, we'll show the, sh the mm -hmm. close-up. But when you lower the recoil, do you actually lose any muzzle velocity as well? No, not really, no. 
And then uh, how much work does that do? Now, it's not like doing a muzzle brake and then you thread the barrel. Right. Is this a little bit less uh, work intensive? Uh, you know, you would think, but it's not. Um, a job like this could take an hour and a half, two hours, something like that. Uh, as, as opposed to making a muzzle brake, yeah, it, in that sense, it is, it is less work. But there's a lot of setup time involved and then a lot of finish work, uh, which you'll see in the pictures. I haven't actually finished this yet. I've got to come back and chamfer these holes to kind of take the, uh, the roughness of the metal out. And then I've also got to come in with a hone and hone the barrel out from the inside. So there's still a little work to be done. On a little this bit thing. of work to be yeah. done, you know, but it, it's basically there. Right. I hope you'll invite me to the shop this week so I can film you um, doing some of the work. On yeah, this yeah, we'll do that. Firearm. That's, that's something that we want to add to the show is what we're all come in during the week when you're actually doing the gunsmithing work and then show clips of that uh, on the show as well. Right. But it's actually a very nice looking firearm and re really, uh, I think, adds a lot of aesthetic value. And now you're saying it lowers, lowers the recoil right. as well. So very cool gunsmithing job this mm -hmm. week. Yeah. All right. Hey, um, also the other thing that we're going to do uh, for the show that's new at the end of the show, we're going to give everybody a preview of what's to come on the next episode. So we'll see what the next what next week's gunsmithing job is going to be. We'll take a look at it. And with that, uh, let's keep things moving along with a little bit of you show me yours. I'll show you mine. It's still not what it sounds like. You show me yours. I'll show you mine. Go out to the desert and shoot. Usually on Sundays when you're testing firearms, and one of I didn't get to go this week. Yeah, I'm sorry, I did. I, yeah, you did. Yeah, I yeah, did. because I was I was doing things like the shotgun. <laughs> one of the problems, one of the inconveniences, what to do about targets, right? Mm. Now, what we had been doing is I have these cinder blocks, a bunch of extra cinder blocks in the back of my house. We take a couple of cinder blocks and I take these big wood poles and I stick them in the cinder blocks and then we staple targets to it, right? But the cinder blocks are heavy. There's not much room in the back of the, of the Hummer to load all that stuff. It's just a pain in the butt mm -hmm. to always take them out. And then every week we need to get new cardboard or new, something new to staple up there. It's not very convenient. So I was looking for a solution. And what I found was this from this company called Viking Solutions is this AR500 steel plate. Well, the solution was in the name, so you right. found it. Boom! It's an AR500 steel plate attached to a metal frame. It was very easy to put together. It breaks down super easy. It takes 10 seconds to set up. And I went out and shot it, and I'll just give you a real quick uh, look at some of the, um, the video that I shot while I was out there. So here you see the real easy setup. For 100 bucks, you get two AR... <laughs> There's the white socks. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, by the way, I'll show you the yeah. socks I'm wearing in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so for 100 bucks, you get two targets. And it says that the um, plates are rated for up to 30 caliber at 100 yards. We shot a pistol calibers, 389 millimeter and 45. Mm -hmm. It held up very well. And we shot 223. It also That's held up very it, well. You know yeah. um, the problem that we ran into, though, it, like any target, if you hit the chain, it's, right. it's not going to last. Right? You hit the chain, it's going to break. But the cool thing about that is you just get buy another piece of chain mm -hmm. or just move it up the link. And so here I think you'll see where I actually um, bust the chain here with the 223 coming up. I still shoot with this But super easy to uh, set up. I really, really enjoyed it a lot. And I recommend this product from Viking Tactical. Yeah, and there you can see um, the damage. Now that is all basically... Yeah, it's just uh, s uh, surface damage, surface basically. Damage. I mean, the paint job, you know, that, that's all you're hurting. Right. Okay. So if I, if I want, I can just get some orange spray paint yep. and boom, good as new. And, and there you see so it. So I am wondering though, you said it was rated up to 30 cal at, at 100 yards. Mm -hmm. So I've got one that I think might put a hole in it. <laughs> I like the way, I always like the way you think, Scott, because I, I, I'll come up, you know, talk about a new product. And well, if they didn't specify, they just said, you know, 30 cal. Right. Um, you know, now if they had said 308 or something like that, then I would say, okay. Okay. But So we're gonna go out and torture test these things and see if we can get a 30 caliber round to, to puncture a hole through this. I may have one. Okay. We're going to we're going to try that out next time. That's a product by Viking Tactical. I'll show some close-ups in the edit fully edited version of the episode and let's get get right to the big big excitement of the show. What we've been looking for our guest tonight of course is for the gun of the week is Mr. Franco Baca from Saracote Southwest and let's give him his round of applause. My heart's all fluttery. I'm ready. <laughs> the big applause. You gave him a big applause. Yeah. Oh, what's up? 
How do you, hey, how do you like that? Yeah, let me turn turn you up here again. Okay, all right. Boom, you cranked you up all the way. How's the volume in your headphones? Good? Oh, it's good. Yeah. Okay, so Franco yeah. Baca is the owner of Cerakote Southwest. He is the sponsor of the show. And when he came on last time, we gave him a plain black Smith & Wesson M&P. And we said, go ahead and throw the logo on there and everything else or anything else. Just be you, creative. Do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And he put it in the hands of his, uh, his Cerakote specialist, David Reyes. Yes. And um, so tell us, before you unveil it, tell us a little bit about how you guys de decided what you were going to put on the firearm. So it was definitely, we had to put your logo on it. Um, it's not, I mean, it's a pretty busy logo if you see that. Right. So we tried our best to, to put it onto this firearm. I think you guys are going to like it. I really yeah. do. Well, let's, uh, let's get, get some, I'm going to get some music here going. So, so what we did is we, uh, we brainstormed and we said, hey, let's, let's figure out how we're going to uh, you know what, what how it's going to look good kind of try and stick with those colors mm -hmm. and I, yeah i think you guys are going to like it are you guys sure. are you guys ready go for it let's, let's 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 do the unveiling i'm going with the james bond music okay yeah all right if you wouldn't mind <clears throat> here we go there it is oh man that looks cool can we pick it up definitely yeah. Oh wow, that's nice, man. Oh, nice. I like that you, you kept it kind of this gray color. Yeah, yeah, nice. Holy cow, that it blows all of my expectations. I was wondering how they were gonna and yeah, where they were gonna yeah. put it. I thought maybe they would drape the logo over the top here somewhere or kind of sideways, but the way you've done it is super cool. Yeah. yeah, that that was also an option. You know, we were gonna put it on the on the grip, but we said, you know what, it'll look really really nice on the front there. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. we'll get some those colors. We'll get yeah, some we need some close ups of that. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you very much for this fantastic job. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And from now on, we're this little guy is staying right here. Yeah. So every every show before we set it on every show, it's gonna be seated right here on this uh, pistol stand. Uh, we're going to talk about it and show it every every time we have an episode. But let's pass it around. So I know the audience is um, definitely curious to see that. Yeah, that's really nice. Really man. nice. So be sure to thank uh, David for, for yeah, his definitely. work and his time and his effort. Yeah, he's going through a sleep study right now, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he couldn't be here. Oh, uh, that's our we'll, yeah. we'll, sleep we'll, I did that all through school. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have him <laughs> on uh, in the future. But I did go and spend some time in the shop, and I got to have a, a quick little look at, uh, at the guys working at Cerco Southwest. And let me show you this short little video clip here. So all of their trucks, all the employees' trucks have their uh, nice uh, uh, logo on the back there. They do laser engraving, and your laser guy looks very talented as well. And so you guys are working on these very cool Punisher-style tumblers there, and you can see they, he's got to be highly skilled with the software applications. They run it, and uh, there's the tumblers there. Super cool. So they do laser engraving as well as Cerakote. And then I got a bit of David uh, mixing colors. Now there's an art to this as well too, right? If somebody wants a particular color. Yeah, yes, I mean, we can mix colors, um, laser engrave, we can incorporate both laser engraving and Cerakote, right. so. And here's where it all happens. You've got this, um, this industrial uh, spray area here where the Cerakote is then into the, the sprayer. And then David will uh, apply it there to the different firearms. Um, and so it was very cool watching him work. He's definitely highly skilled, highly talented. And you can see by the job he did on that uh, pistol that um, it looks absolutely fantastic. So, so thanks again. And let's put it in its place and shine the light on it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I brought you guys some gifts too. Oh, holy, so you guys holy, can, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is for you. Pass that over to oh. Felix. That's nice. And then you got, you got one too. Oh man. Oh, hey, all right. Yeah, hope you guys like them and uh, put them out and have drinks here. You guys, uh, of course, yeah, that's not great, alcoholic. Man. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if you guys can see this on on the camera. We'll get close ups of these too, but yeah. uh, that's my logo, and then Felix has the one that says "Straight Shooting" on it. That is really awesome. That's nice, man. Well, th yeah, we, thank we, you guys. Thank you for for allowing us to be the first uh, yeah. sponsor. Oh. And the other the other thing I wanted to mention. So when I went to lunch with I, I went to lunch with Franco and his guys from the shop on Friday as well. And David had let it slip that he had actually posted a photo of that on Instagram. So I have had to stay off of Instagram 
and, the, and that social media for the entire weekend. I've heard of this Instagram. <laughs> uh, it, it's a it's a thing on the computer, right? Yes. Okay. Well, actually, yeah, you can access it on your computer, but it's mostly a mobile phone application. And please, let's this year, let's get Scott onto a, a smartphone, just if, for nothing else, to for the promotion of the show in social media and that sort of thing. But uh, it was very difficult for me not to get on Instagram. Now, as Franco knows, I'm always blasting promotions and photos for Cerakote Southwest and the show and everything. And I had to stay off of it for a few days lest I see the photo. Okay. So, so I, had to, I had to be off of it. Your willpower is overwhelming, man. It was, it was, I was <laughs> quite impressed because normally I'm kind of a spoiled guy and I, you know, I, can't, I don't want to wait and I'm not impatient. But I, it was way worth the wait, dude. This is really awesome M&P. I, w- I would say one of the coolest custom Cerakote M&Ps I've ever seen. So I'm going to blast this all over the place on social media. I'm going full bore. Glad you guys liked it. Yeah. And these, these are really cool. Yeah. So really we're, great, we're man. We're going to have these uh, out quite a bit. And uh, yeah. You know, we'll drink out of these every show. I'm going to have, you know, <laughs> every show. Awesome. Hey, uh, with that, it's uh, time to end another uh, episode. I think pretty Has soon, it been quick? That quick? Yeah, already? Really? It, it is pretty quick. But uh, let me tell you what we're going to talk about next week. Um, now, when I carry concealed, I, sometimes I wish I could carry extra magazines, and I have not had good luck finding a cool, you know, and comfortable. Because ex- you never know when you're going to get into some kind of John Wicky and, uh, <laughs> you know, jumping that, over couches and things that's like right. that. I mean, let's say I'm carrying my Sig Sauer uh-huh. P226, which holds 15 rounds, right? right? But if I come across a gang of like 30 hooligans. Happened all the time in every 80s movie. Yes, I want two extra mags with 30 more rounds. Right. So where, where, how do I find a cool mag carrier? So Sig Sauer, the actual Sig Sauer website had a sale on, on leather magazine uh, holders and I bought three of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, one double stack for my nine millimeter and forties, a single stack for my you know, I bet we could modify a headband like the one that you're wearing to put my mag and holder. it could be very fashionable. <laughs> Great idea. The, the idea behind this was, you know, we've always got this third camera back up here and uh-huh. I said, let's give people tonight, we're going to give them a point of view to see what it's like to host the show yeah. from, from where I sit. You ought to try wearing it. No, you don't want one on me, dude. I drink so much coffee. It just, <laughs> it wouldn't be good. So we're going to talk about those six hour mag- magazine holders next week. And then a year, what's the gunsmithing job? of the Oh, week? the gunsmithing job of the week. Uh, for for next week is going to be an interesting one. So we've got a muzzle loader. It's one of the newer style uh, inline muzzle loaders. Uh, so not the old, you know. Yeah. Um, well, kind of, but not not in the sense of uh, you know like uh, mid eighteen hundreds muzzle loader. Okay. This okay. is a modernized one. But right. what do we what do you get this to do to it? Gentleman uh, would like a, uh, a muzzle brake put on his muzzle loader. A muzzle brake on the muzzle so loader. So what we've got here is, I think it's a 54 or 58 caliber, something like that, uh, uh, muzzle loader. I'm not real sure, don't quote me. It's massive. It's, it's, a, big, it's a big hole. Yeah. Um, so anyway, All right. now we're gonna have to, to make a custom muzzle brake for this guy. I'll come into the shop and shoot some video. And we'll do that. We look forward to that yeah. with our uh, gunsmithing job of the week. And as always, we're gonna have our other regular segments, Guns in the News next week a gun of the week, and mm-hmm. more you show me yours, I'll show you mine, which is not... Not what you think it is. Not, not <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us for another great episode of Straight Shooting Firearms Talk Show. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Stay tuned for the next episode of Straight Shooting when we take another shot.